In the year 922, a man was tortured and executed in Baghdad for saying three words, I am the truth. His name was Al-Halai, and what he experienced before those words cost him, his life was something modern. Neuroscience is only now beginning to understand. He had undergone what we now call ego dissolution, the complete loss of subjective self-identity. Recent studies using brain imaging have discovered that this experience, which Al Halai called Fena, literally rewires the brain and can eliminate narcissistic personality traits. What seemed like extreme behavior 1,100 years ago might actually be the key to psychological healing. What you're about to discover will fundamentally change how you understand your own mind. Because the ego you think defines you, that voice in your head that says, I want this, I need that, I am better than them, might be nothing more than a useful fiction created by your brain. And when that fiction dissolves, something extraordinary happens. al Halai was a Persian mystic born around 858, who became one of the most controversial figures in medieval Islamic history. Unlike other spiritual teachers who kept their insights private, Al-Halai openly shared his mystical experiences with anyone who would listen. This openness made him many enemies among religious authorities who felt such knowledge should remain hidden. According to historical records, Al-Halai underwent profound psychological transformations that he described using the term fana. In Arabic, this word means passing away or extinction. But Al-Halai wasn't talking about physical death. He was describing the complete dissolution of a sense of being a separate individual self. The experience was so overwhelming that Al-Halai struggled to express it in words. His best-known work, the Kitab al-Tawasin, uses line diagrams and symbols to convey mystical experiences that he said could not be expressed through language alone. In this text, he frequently employs visual symbols in what seems to be a determined struggle to convey profound psychological states that words couldn't capture. When Al-Halai declared, I am the truth, religious authorities interpreted this as a claim of personal divinity. But modern psychology suggests something entirely different was happening. Al-Halai was likely describing a state a contemporary neuroscience calls ego dissolution, where the ordinary sense of being a separate self completely disappears. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy defines this experience as a state where one's sense of self passes away and one is filled with a different kind of awareness. The individual ego, that collection of thoughts, memories, and identity that normally defines who you are, temporarily dissolves entirely. This isn't just ancient mysticism. Modern researchers have been able to study ego dissolution in laboratory settings using brain imaging technology. What they've discovered is remarkable. The experience, all Halai described over a thousand years ago, corresponds to measurable changes in brain, activity that can be observed and studied scientifically. Recent research published in neuroscience journals shows that ego dissolution involves specific alterations in how the brain processes the sense of self. During these experiences, brain regions associated with self-referential thinking become less active, while areas related to pure awareness remain highly engaged. Studies using functional MRI scans have identified the neural correlates of ego dissolution under controlled conditions. Researchers found that when subjects experience the dissolution of their sense of individual self, there are significant changes in brain connectivity patterns particularly in regions associated with maintaining self-awareness and personal identity. One of the most striking findings is that ego dissolution experiences can reduce narcissistic personality traits. Research published in neuroscience journals found that people who undergo ego dissolution report decreased levels of self-centeredness, reduced need for admiration, and increased empathy for others. These changes can persist for months after the experience. The therapeutic implications are enormous. Narcissistic personality disorder 
is characterized by an inflated sense of self-importance, a constant need for admiration, and a lack of empathy for others. Traditional therapy for this condition is notoriously difficult and often ineffective. But ego dissolution experiences seem to address the core psychological mechanisms that drive narcissistic behavior. Neuroscientists have studied the brains of people with narcissistic personality disorder using structural imaging technology. They found consistent patterns of reduced gray matter volume in the medial prefrontal cortex, a brain region associated with self-enhancement tendencies. Ego dissolution experiences appear to temporarily override these dysfunctional patterns. But how does temporarily losing your sense of self lead to lasting psychological changes? The answer lies in how the brain constructs our sense of identity in the first place. Cognitive neuroscience research reveals that the self is not a fixed entity, but rather an ongoing construction created by the brain. Your sense of being you emerges from the integrated activity of multiple brain networks that constantly generate and maintain a coherent sense of personal identity. This process involves what researchers call self-binding, where the brain continuously integrates different types of information, perceptions, memories, and sensations into a unified sense of being a single, continuous self. This binding process requires significant neural energy and creates what scientists describe as a Cartesian fiction, the illusion of being a simple, enduring entity that experiences and controls your thoughts and actions. During ego dissolution, this binding process temporarily breaks down. The brain stops creating the illusion of a separate self, allowing consciousness to experience itself without the usual boundaries and limitations. From this perspective, what al Halai experienced wasn't the expansion of his individual ego, but its complete dissolution. Modern psychology recognizes several factors that can trigger ego dissolution experiences. Research shows that people with certain personality traits are more likely to undergo these experiences. High levels of openness to experience, psychological flexibility, and what researchers call absorption, the ability to become completely absorbed in activities or experiences, all predict greater likelihood of ego. Dissolution. Mindfulness meditation has also been shown to facilitate ego dissolution experiences. Studies of experienced meditators found that advanced practitioners often report states where their ordinary sense of self temporarily disappears, replaced by pure awareness without a clear subject-object distinction. The relationship between mindfulness and ego dissolution is particularly relevant for understanding al Halai's experience. Historical accounts suggest he spent years in intensive spiritual practice before undergoing his most profound experiences. This extended preparation likely created the psychological conditions necessary for ego dissolution to occur. Research on ego dissolution reveals two distinct types of experiences. The first is what researchers call ego loss, characterized by anxiety, confusion, and a frightening sense of losing control. The second is unity experience, involving feelings of connection, peace, and expanded awareness. al Halai's declaration suggests he experienced the unity type rather than ego. Loss.unity experiences are associated with positive personality changes, increased empathy, and lasting improvements in psychological well-being. People who undergo unity-type ego dissolution often report feeling more connected to others, less concerned with personal status and achievement, and more focused on meaning and purpose rather than material success. Contrast with narcissistic personality patterns is striking. While narcissism involves an inflated but fragile sense of self that requires constant validation, ego dissolution experiences seem to dissolve the very psychological structures that create narcissistic needs. Without a strongly defined separate self to protect and enhance, the compulsive self-focus that characterizes narcissism simply has no foundation. Modern treatment approaches for personality disorders 
are beginning to incorporate insights from ego dissolution research. Therapists are exploring how controlled ego dissolution experiences might complement traditional therapy methods, particularly for conditions involving rigid self-concepts or excessive self-focus. The therapeutic potential extends beyond narcissistic personality disorder. Research suggests that ego dissolution experiences can be beneficial for depression, anxiety, and other conditions involving excessive self-criticism or rumination. When the critical inner voice that drives these conditions temporarily dissolves, people often gain new perspectives on their problems and develop more compassionate relationships with themselves. However, researchers emphasize that ego dissolution is not always beneficial. The experience can be destabilizing for people who lack psychological preparation or emotional support. This is why Al Halai's openness about his experiences was so controversial. Traditional wisdom suggested these states should only be approached with proper guidance and preparation. Modern research confirms this wisdom. Studies show that factors like mindset, environment, and psychological preparation significantly influence whether ego dissolution experiences are beneficial or distressing. People who approach these states with anxiety or resistance are more likely to have difficult experiences, while those who approach with acceptance and surrender tend to have positive outcomes. The parallel between Hal Halai's fate and modern research findings is sobering. His openness about ego dissolution led to his execution, but his insights about the nature of self and consciousness were centuries ahead of their time. Only now are we beginning to understand the psychological and neurobiological mechanisms underlying the experiences he described. From a practical standpoint, ego dissolution research offers new perspectives on some of the most challenging aspects of human psychology. The ego structures that create suffering through excessive self-focus, comparison with others, and endless seeking for validation are revealed to be mental constructions rather than fundamental aspects of who you are. This doesn't mean the ego is entirely negative. The ability to maintain a coherent sense of self is essential for functioning in daily life. You need to remember who you are, maintain relationships, pursue goals, and navigate social situations. The ego serves important practical functions. But problems arise when ego structures become rigid, inflated, or compulsive. When your sense of self requires constant validation, when you can't tolerate criticism, when you need to feel superior to others, or when you're trapped in cycles of self-judgment, the ego has become a source of suffering rather than a useful tool. Ego dissolution experiences offer a temporary reprieve from these patterns. By showing that the self is more flexible than usually assumed, these experiences can create lasting changes in how you relate to thoughts, emotions, and identity. Many people report that even brief ego dissolution experiences fundamentally change their relationship with anxiety, depression, and interpersonal conflict. The research also illuminates why traditional therapy sometimes fails to create lasting change. Many therapeutic approaches work within existing ego structures, trying to modify thoughts and behaviors while leaving the underlying sense of self intact. But if the ego structures themselves are the source of the problem, working within them may have limited effectiveness. Ego dissolution experiences bypass this limitation by temporarily dissolving the ego structures entirely. This creates space for new patterns of thinking and feeling to emerge. When the ego reconstitutes itself after the experience, it often does so in a more flexible and balanced way. Understanding ego dissolution also sheds light on why some people seem naturally more resilient and emotionally balanced than others. People with naturally flexible ego structures may be less prone to the rigid self-focus that creates psychological suffering. They can maintain a sense of identity without becoming trapped by it. This suggests that psychological health might involve finding the right balance between ego structure and ego flexibility. Too little ego structure can lead to confusion and instability. 
Too much can create rigidity and suffering. The healthiest individuals may be those who can move fluidly between different levels of ego, involvement depending on the situation. For Al-Halai, the dissolution of ego boundaries was so complete that he could no longer distinguish between his individual awareness and universal consciousness. From his perspective, saying, I am the truth, wasn't a claim about his personal identity but a description of what remained when personal identity dissolved entirely. Modern neuroscience suggests this interpretation is more accurate than the religious authorities of his time understood. When ego structures dissolve, what remains is pure awareness itself, unconditioned by personal history, social identity, or individual desires. This awareness appears to be a more fundamental aspect of consciousness than the ego structures that usually dominate our experience. The practical implications of this understanding are profound. If you can learn to relate to your ego as a useful construction rather than your fundamental identity, you gain tremendous freedom in how you respond to life's challenges. Criticism doesn't threaten your core being. Failure doesn't define your worth. Other people's success doesn't diminish your value. This perspective doesn't eliminate the ego, but puts it in proper context. You can use ego structures when they're helpful and let them go when they're not. You can maintain a sense of personal identity without being imprisoned by it. You can care about your goals and relationships without the compulsive attachment that creates suffering. Al-Halai paid the ultimate price for discovering and sharing these insights. But his legacy lives on in the growing scientific understanding of consciousness, identity, and human potential. What seemed like dangerous mysticism in the 10th century is now recognized as a profound understanding of the mind's capacity for transformation. The research on ego dissolution is still in its early stages, but the implications are already clear. The ego you think defines you is more flexible than you realize. The suffering created by rigid self-focus can be transformed. A psychological barriers that seem so solid can dissolve, revealing new possibilities for how you relate to yourself and others. Perhaps the most important insight from both Al-Halai's experience and modern research is that change is possible at the deepest levels. The personality patterns, emotional reactions, and mental habits that seem so fixed are actually more fluid than they appear. When you understand the constructed nature of the ego, you gain access to levels of psychological freedom that most people never imagined possible. This doesn't require dramatic mystical experiences or dangerous experiments. Even understanding the principle can begin to create change. When you recognize that your ego is a useful fiction rather than your fundamental identity, you can start to hold it more lightly. You can notice when ego structures are creating suffering and learn to step back from them. The key insight that Al-Halai died for and that modern science is now validating is simple but revolutionary. You are not who you think you are. The ego that seems so solid and important is actually a flexible construction that can be modified, transcended, or temporarily dissolved entirely. And when it is, what remains is something far more vast and free than the limited identity you usually take yourself to be. This understanding offers hope for anyone trapped in cycles of self-criticism, interpersonal conflict, or endless seeking for validation. The prison bars are not as solid as they seem. The ego that creates so much suffering is not your fundamental nature. And the peace that Al-Halai found in ego dissolution is available to anyone willing to question the assumptions about self and identity that most people never examine. The journey from ego imprisonment to ego flexibility is not always easy, but it is possible. And in a world where mental health challenges are increasing, where narcissism and self-focus create widespread suffering, the insights that Al-Halai died for may be more relevant now than ever before. The ego isn't real in the way you think it is. And that might be the most liberating discovery you'll ever make.